Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another Timey Wimey Tuesday Blu ray update. Got some more classic Who goodness to uh, show you today. And uh, yes, I still have the fan going because it's still boiling. Will this heat wave ever end? Actually, little secret, I filmed all of these updates on the same day, so yeah, it's just one really hot day that I decided to do them. Um, yeah. Anyway, more classic Who on Blu-ray. Let's check it out today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Alrighty, so first up, we got a pretty special one here. Sylvester McCoy Season 3, which is actually Season 26 of the series. This is the final season of Classic Who. This is where it all ended, right here, the 1989 season. 14 glorious episodes. We have four stories on here. Battlefield, Ghostlight, The Curse of Fenric, and Survival. Now, here's the really cool thing about this Blu-ray set. We have so many alternate cuts of these stories. Uh, we got the rare extended VHS versions of Battlefield and the Curse of Fenric. I used to have that Curse of Fenric edition. So back in the day, in the days of VHS, uh, both Battlefield and Curse of Fenric were released in special extended editions exclusive to the VHS releases, um, containing additional footage that had never been seen before. So very cool. Those versions, like those specific cuts, have been unseen since those VHS releases, so it's great to have them back on this Blu-ray set. We also have Ghost Light, the extended work print, brand new and exclusive to Blu-ray. That is really special to me because I love Ghost Light. Um, a lot of people were kind of split on it, a lot of fans were kind of split on it. I've always really liked it. I'm a sucker for a haunted house story, and a haunted house story in Doctor Who, even better. Two of my favorite things coming together and having a wonderful spooky baby. So, <laughs> I've always really liked Ghost Light. I talked about it quite a bit in my Doctor Who DVD Disambiguation a while back, uh, when I talked about the Season 26 DVDs. Um, the no I, I love the novelization of Ghost Light. I always felt that as a three-parter, it would have felt better as a four-parter, uh, just because it was a fairly complex, multi-layered story, and I felt like three episodes wasn't quite enough time to explore some of the ideas in it. It felt a little bit rushed in spots. So this extended version is a real treat because it basically extends it to the length of about three and a half episodes. So almost four episodes. Um, if you really want the full maximum version of the story you can get, I highly recommend the novelization, which is also written by Mark Platt, the same author who wrote the story. Uh, it's wonderful. Fills in a lot of gaps, explains a few things a lot better, and uh, is just generally a very satisfying uh, novelization. Um, and especially if you're a fan of the story like me, it's just a wonderful treat. What else we got here? We got uh, Buried Treasure, 30 Years of Fenric, a brand new one-hour making of documentary with Sylvester McCoy, so Sophie Aldred, Tomek Bork, Nicholas Parsons, Corey Pullman, Ian Briggs, Andrew Cartmel, Mark Ayers, Merrick Anton, Stephen Mansfield, and John Collins. Uh, in conversation, Matthew Sweet chats to Sophie Aldred, Showman, The Life of John Nathan Turner. That man had a, a fascinating life and just loved Doctor Who so much and did so much to keep it alive in its later years. Um, absolutely adore that man. So it's a feature-length look at the life of Doctor Who's longest-serving producer. Uh, the Writer's Room, featuring Ben Aron Aronovich, Mark Platt, Ian Briggs, Rona Monroe, and Andrew Cartmel discuss, discussing Season 26. Uh, behind the Sofa, new episodes of Sylvester McCoy and Sophie Aldred, companions Janet Fielding, Sarah Sutton, and Annika Wills, and 13th Doctor writers Paul McTeague, McTeague and Joy Wilkinson. Uh, Becoming the Destroyer, learn how cast and crew brought this fearsome monster to life. Rare archive discoveries, including previously unseen studio and location footage. I mentioned this in my update a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the other... Um, uh, 
classic who blu-ray sets how i absolutely love the studio footage because it's really really gives you like the sort of fly on the wall feel like you're just there watching them make the show and it's just pure gold to me i love that stuff and uh you know give me more please as much as you got uh restoration team whatever you can pack on these blu-rays bring it bring it all baby i love it um and then you got the uh, the brulee tr blue <laughs> brulee <laughs> the creme brulee trailer, uh, the Blu-ray trailer, The Promise, which features Sophie Aldred back in character as Ace. So you get to find out a little bit about what Ace has been up to since her time with the Doctor, which is very cool. Um, yeah, it says Sophie Aldred back in character for the first time since 1989. That's not entirely true because she's done a lot of big finished audios in character as well. Um, we got 5.1 surround mixes on every version of every episode. How cool is that? Full surround sound mixes for all 14 episodes, every single cut of them. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and then you've got additional special editions. You've got uh, alternate special editions from the DVDs of both Battlefield and Curse of Fenric as well. And all of the extras from the DVDs and 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 it just goes on and on and on so this is actually a seven disc set not too shabby for being only 14 episodes long but I mean there's two stories where you get like three cuts of them a piece uh, what is this here yeah it's special edition uh, work print of uh, hold on a second you got battlefield the special edition Battlefield, the VHS reconformed version, which basically means they reconstructed the VHS cut from, the, I guess, the best available uh, footage. You got the Ghost Light TV version and work print, uh, Battlefield TV version and special edition, Curse of Fenric TV version and special edition, Curse of Fenric VHS edition, special edition, um... And then survival. Oddly, survival is the only one that doesn't have an alternate cut. I don't know why. Maybe they just don't have the original footage anymore. Who knows? But anyway, this is a fantastic set. So many treats on here. If you're a fan of season 26, which was a fantastic season, like the show really went out with a bang, um, this is such a treat. You know, to be able to relive these great old, great stories from the, the final season. Um, in all these wonderful new ways, some of which you may have never seen before. Um, it's great. I love it. They did such a great job on that set. So let's put that on the shelf right next to Mr. Colin Baker. There we go. All right. Next, we have the latest set, and so far, the last set that's been released. I'm guessing these are on hold because of the pandemic. There haven't been any new sets announced as of yet but we have tom baker season three which is season 14 overall of the series this is the second of the so-called gothic horror seasons and what many consider to be one of the all-time greatest seasons of the classic series the other being season 13 the other gothic horror season season 13 was actually my first season of doctor who i saw a little bit of the tail end of revenge of the cybermen as the first thing i ever saw and then went straight into season 13 with Terror of the Zygons, and holy moly, what an amazing batch of episodes and stories to introduce, to be introduced to Doctor Who. Um, amazing, and it continues on with season 14. What a, what a fantastic, strong season. These are the stories we've got on this season. We have The Mask of, Mask of Mandragora, The Hand of Fear, which is Sarah Jane's final story until, of course, the new series later. The Deadly Assassin, which is basically the Doctor Who does the Manchurian Candidate. It's one of my all-time favorite stories. That's the one that introduced more about the culture of Gallifrey and the Time Lords. It's the one that introduced the Matrix of Leadership. Wait a minute. Did, did I just say the Matrix of Leadership? It's the one that introduced the Matrix of Leadership. Yeah. Needless to say, it was quite late when I was filming these, and I guess I was getting a little tired. Uh, yeah, it's just The Matrix. No, not that The Matrix. It's just... The Matrix, the central repository for all the Time Lord's knowledge and experience. We have an old villain returning, and it's just so damn good. I, I love that story so much. 
Uh, we have the Face of Evil, which of course introduces Leela. The Robots of Death, which is another of my all-time favorite stories. That one is just so, so good. Uh, and The Talons of Wang Chiang, which is another fantastic story. It's just so, so good. Um, so with uh, with this one, we got a whole bunch of new stuff. Uh, all the old features from the, the DVDs, of course. Plus brand new special effects for The Talons of Wang Chiang. They, they basically... Uh, uh, fixed up some of the old effects, just kind of punched them up a bit with a bit of a modern flavor. Um, they replaced the rat, the giant rat, with a, a much better looking CG version of the rat. And, uh, and I think they improved some of the, like, the laser blasts and uh, other effects and whatnot. But the big one was the, the changing of the rat. Now, of course, it does have the original unaltered version as well. Don't worry. So if you're a purist and you just want to see it as it was, I mean, I always liked the old rat anyway, as cheesy as it was. It was still scary as hell when I saw it as a kid, especially when it was, like, gnawing on some guy's leg in it. It's scary shit. Uh, then we have In Conversation. Matthew Sweet uh, chats to producer Philip Hinchcliffe. Uh, Our Sarah Jane, a new documentary celebrating the life of Elizabeth Sladen. It's wonderful. Uh, Behind the Sofa, new, new episodes with Tom Baker, Louise Jameson, Philip Hinchcliffe, Peter Purvis, and Sophie Aldred. Brand new audio commentaries with Tom Baker on selected episodes of The Face of Evil and The Talons of Wing Chiang. Uh, who's, now, this is a really special extra here. Who's Doctor Who, which was the first feature-length documentary ever made about the show. And it's really good. It's, I think, one of the all-time great Doctor Who documentaries. Not only do they, inter uh, not only do they interview uh, both kids and parents and teachers and psychologists all about the show and what they like about it and what they feel the impact of it is and things like that, but uh, this version, they actually tracked down the original film print for, this, for the documentary and remastered it in high definition. How often do you see that, where they actually remaster the extras? Never mind just the show. They remastered the extras. So you have this beautiful, fully restored, high-definition version of the first Doctor Who documentary ever. And it's gorgeous. And it doesn't end there. There's an additional featurette called Who's Doctor Who Revisited, where Toby Haydock basically gets together with the original producer of Who's Doctor Who and goes around and tracks down everybody they could find who was in the original special. So a lot of the original kids that were interviewed, who are now, of course, in their 40s, um, they bring them back and interview them again about their time doing the, the documentary. So it's like a documentary about the documentary. Very meta, but so fascinating. And really loved that a lot. It was a great, great pair of features there. Uh, then we got the Blu-ray trailer. Uh, we got an audio archive, including a rare Tom Baker interview from 1976. We got the radio dramas Exploration Earth and the vintage LP release uh, Doctor Who and the Pescatons. We got 5.1 surround sound for the Deadly Assassin. How cool is that? Beautiful new sound mix for that. Uh, and a PDF written archive of scripts and rare archive material, plus all the aforementioned DVD extras. D d do you get the impression I love this set? Yeah, this is fantastic. I actually, I love all these Blu-ray sets, and I honestly, even having collected all the DVDs, I feel that these are totally worth the double dip. A, for the quality upgrade, which is amazing. B, for all the alternate cuts and behind-the-scenes stuff that you get. Uh, C, for having even a lot of the classic vintage extras beautifully remastered from the best available source material. And it's, it's, it's D through Z, they're amazing. <laughs> anyway, let's put these on the shelf here, right in the middle. So now we have three of the seven seasons of Tom Baker. And there you go, right there. That is the entire collection so far. Still annoys me that we don't get slipcovers anymore, but uh, what can I say? Anyway, fantastic sets. We're not done yet, because I got one more. Um, I raved about the previous release in this, uh, this collection that they're doing, and um, I got to rave about this one, too. We have The Faceless Ones, another classic Second Doctor story 
brought back to life through the miracle of animation. <laughs> so, of course, as most of you will know, they do have the audio for all of the missing episodes. So this is a great way to bring them back to life, basically doing fully animated reconstructions using the original audio as a guide. I mean, that's basically the way cartoons are done anyway. They do the audio first, like all the dialogue and, and stuff, and then they do the animation to match the dialogue. That's literally what they're doing here. They're just treating it like as if it's it was meant to be a cartoon and doing these wonderful reconstructions. So this, of course, uh, once again, is the uh, Steelbook edition, because I just love these Steelbook editions that they're doing. They're beautiful. This, however, unlike the Macro Terror, everything that's on here is also on the regular edition. So content-wise, there's actually no difference anymore between the Steelbook editions and the regular editions, which is a nice consideration for fans, considering that the Steelbook editions are limited and the regular editions are not. So let's just take a quick look here. Um... So, once again, we, we do have a booklet. This is actually the cover of the regular edition. So, uh, And there was one episode of the Faceless Ones that still existed. I think it was... Uh, I know there was two. Episodes one and three. That's what it was. So what this has here is it's got all six episodes of the story animated in both color and black and white. It has the original uh, existing episodes one and three. It has telesnap reconstructions of episodes 2, 4, 5, and 6 with optional production subtitles. So if you just want to watch a photo reconstruction, that's on there as well. It's got audio commentaries on the animated episodes 4, 5, and 6, plus original episodes 1 and 3. Uh, it has a making of, face-to-face -face with the faceless ones, stock footage from the original production, surviving film fragments, and a trailer for Fury from the Deep which is the next one that uh, actually at the time of this recording was just released. Um, I'm trying to track down the Steelbook edition because it's currently sold out everywhere. That was the same thing that happened with this was the Steelbook was sold out anywhere or everywhere and I found a third-party Amazon seller that uh, got it in stock and was selling it for a reasonable price so I grabbed it. So I'm keeping an eye out for Fury from the Deep because I really want it. So this is the uh, the beautiful steel book. So it starts off, travel your way, chameleon tours. Travel our way. Oh, and then it's a lovely three disc set. Yeah, very very nice indeed. Um, I really love these uh, these steel book editions. They're just so so beautiful. So let's put this uh, on there. So this is actually from the same people who did the Macro Terror, so you can expect the same quality of animation, which I think is fantastic. Um, I really like the work that they're doing on these, and I can't wait to see more. Um, once again, there, there haven't been any further ones announced. There's some rumors that after Fury from the Deep, the next one might be uh, Evil of the Daleks or the Abominable Snowmen. That's the two that are kind of the, the popular possible choices right now. So we'll see how that goes. So let's, uh, I'm not sure what order these go in. Let me just grab my uh, program guide here. So for second Doctor Reconstructions, we got Power of the Daleks, the Macro Terror, and the Faceless Ones. I think these are all from season four, aren't they? Or five? Four. Okay. So it's the Macro Terror and the Faceless Ones. So. Uh, if they did Evil of the Daleks, then that means we would only need the Highlanders and hopefully animated versions of the two missing episodes of the Underwater Menace to finish that season. So Macro Terror and Faceless Ones, that's actually two consecutive stories. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And where does Fury from the Deep fall into the mix here? Fury from the Deep is the second last story from Season 5. So there we go. Uh, this is my Doctor Who pro program guide, the new edition, updated and revised, current as of 1989. <laughs> but it's a pretty definitive guide to uh, the classic series, and it's it's a handbook that I've referred to and had um, a as like a sort of primary go-to reference for a very long time. So there we go. So the Doctor Who Blu-rays are filling out nicely. Um, 
Yeah, you probably noticed since I did my Doctor Who overview a couple of years ago, I've rearranged the shelf a little bit. Up top, you can't see there, but I have the, uh, it's basically all my other British sci-fi. I decided to just kind of put it all together up there. Down here we have um, the, uh, the classic series, everything from the first uh, four Doctors up to the first few adventures of the fifth Doctor. And then the back row here is all the rest of the classic series DVDs. And then in the front, I've got the, uh, the Blu-rays, of course. So it's hard to put them all in chronological order because some of them, like the Steelbooks, are just individual stories. So I put the individual stories over on this side here, more or less in, uh, in chronological order, with the animated ones together. So I've got Adventure in Space and Time, the animated ones, and then I've got uh, all of the live action ones, the, the actual classic series uh, sets. Starting with Spearhead from Space, and then uh, carrying on through the season sets. And then I've got New Who here. I've got uh, series one through four. Well, basically, Christopher Eccleston, David Tennant. Got a bunch of individual ones and Matt Smith and um, um, <laughs> Peter Capaldi. Sorry it's late when I'm filming this. My brain is mush. And then finally, I have the two complete sets of Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi. So... I probably need to do some closer looks one of these days, don't I? I don't think I've done one for the Peter Capaldi set. Um, I'm assuming you guys would probably like to see that. It's a very nice set. And then maybe we'll do uh, maybe we'll do closer looks at at you know the steel books and the the season sets as well because I did ones for the uh, the other ones that I got. So maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll do that for those as well. I don't know when. Don't bug me about it. <laughs> I'm just saying it's something that I'll probably do at some point. But um, I do have some more Doctor Who stuff on the way in the mail. Um, so hopefully it will arrive before this video goes live and I can crank out another update for you for next week. If not, well, maybe we'll do something else. Maybe we'll do one of those closer looks. I don't know. It's a mystery to me as well as you. Tune in again next week and find out what it is. Maybe it'll be nothing. Maybe it'll be something. We'll find out in a week. How's that for a Doctor Who style cliffhanger? Anyway, pretty lame, I know. I'm gonna go to bed, because it's very late as I'm filming this. But first, thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to catch me on Twitch. I stream there almost every day. If you want to add any of these to your DVD or Blu-ray or Blu-ray collection, because they're Blu-rays. If you want to add any of these to your Blu-ray collection, I'll put Amazon links in the description down below. Um, and, of course, using my links does help to support the show, and I really appreciate that. So thank you very much for those of you who use my Amazon links. <sighs> I'll see you next time. All right. Until then, thanks for watching, and sayonara.